Mr. Larsonese, your name, please. Mr. Larsonese. Okay, listen, sir. <clears throat> you've been extremely loud in the back, so to the point where you've interrupted the record from the door here between the courtroom and the jail. So you've you've been very loud for that. So let's step it up a little bit with your volume and state your name for the record, please. Indicate, sir, you have the right to have an attorney if you cannot afford one. The court will appoint one to represent you. Am, am I keeping you awake, Mr. Larsonese? Oh, no, you're not. <laughs> All right, the court's going to enter a plea of not guilty on your behalf. Schedule this matter for probable cause conference on May 17th at 9.15 a.m. Is there a problem, Mr. Larsonese? No, I'm not feeling well, Your Honor. Today, in Judge DeSanto's court, we have a defendant who collapses during his hearing. In the chat, there was a lot of heat on how the sheriffs handled this emergency situation. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. Let's get into the video. Okay. We are going on the record in the matter of the state of Michigan versus Michael R. Sneeze, 23975. And Sergeant, your name for the record, please. Sergeant Robert Fitzpatrick. All right, thank you. And if you can please raise your right hand. Do you sound me swear from the testimony about to give this matter to be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. All right, thank you. And you may proceed on the warrant. Your Honor, on May 7th, 2023, at approximately 8.35 p.m., Officers Cox and Sloan observed larceny pushing a lawnmower on a sidewalk northbound Biddle in the area of North Drive. Officer Cox recognized larceny from multiple prior contacts and had prior knowledge that he had a narcotic warrant for his arrest. When officers approached larceny, he attempted to avoid contact and kept walking and appeared as though he was going to run from them. Larceny was detained for his warrant. Larsenese informed officers that he had needles and narcotics on his person. Upon searching Larsenese, Officer Cox located three syringes, one burnt crack pipe, one cell phone baggie containing a white rock-like substance consistent with crack cocaine, and one cell phone baggie containing a bundle of suspected heroin in his right front pocket of his jeans. Officers Sloan and Cox field tested the white rock substance that tested positive B cocaine and weighed 2.47 grams. They also field tested the suspected heroin, which tested positive B fentanyl, weighing 0.5 grams. Nothing further. I think you've had an examination complaining witness. I find that the offenses charged were committed, that there's probable cause to believe the defendant committed the offenses. All right, thank you. And uh, counsel, your appearance, please. Your Honor, for the record, John, I'll call P30758 on behalf of uh, Mr. Larson. I'm sorry. Larson. Larson. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Larson, your name, please. Mr. Larson. Okay, listen, sir. <clears throat> You've been extremely loud in the back, so to the point where you've interrupted the record from the door here between the courtroom and the jail. So you've, you've been very loud for that. So let's step it up a little bit with your volume and state your name for the record, please. What's your name? Michael Larsonese. All right, counsel, as to the arraignment. Your Honor, I've discussed this matter with uh, Mr. Larsonese. Uh, at this time, I also discussed with him the charges and a potential penalty on his charge. I also informed him of his constitutional rights. At this time, he was waived upon the reading of those uh, charges, stand mute to the charges, and asked for a plea and not guilty again. All right, the court's going to read the formal reading of the arraignment of the charges. The court's going to Indicate, sir, you have the right to have an attorney. If you cannot afford one, the court will appoint one to represent you. Am, am I keeping you awake, Mr. Larsonese? Oh, no, no, you're not. <laughs> You've had an opportunity to speak with the attorney that we have here for you today, correct? Yes, you are. All right. And you have the right to be presumed innocent to proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. You have the right to have a trial by a judge or by a jury. And you also have the right to remain silent. Anything you say orally or in writing may be used against you in court. Do you understand those rights, sir? Yes, I do, Your Honor. All right, the court's going to enter a plea of not guilty on your behalf. Schedule this matter for a probable cause conference on May 17th at 9.15 a.m. Is there a problem, Mr. Larsonese? No, I'm not feeling well, Your Honor. Okay, well, let's see how much you can, how, how long you can stand uh, during the proceedings, sir. All right. All right, Mr. Gopal, as to um, Your Honor, as the court is well aware, it is an habitual fourth year 
Mr. Larson, he does have a prior criminal record, including some drug cases. Give him the rope. Excuse us, Your Honor. Wait a moment. Stand up. Stand up, Michael. Stand up. That's not on the record. Stand up, Mike. Stand up. I have stuff for the game. Let's go. Mike. Stop. All right. Are you, um, are you, is he responsive? Responsive at this moment. Uh, we're having uh, medics or contact, so if you give us a few moments, we'll see what we can do here. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Thank you. We are recalling the matter of the state of Michigan versus Michael Larson East 23975 and appearance council. Your Honor, again, John Goldblatt, P30758 on behalf of Mr. I'm sorry. Larson East? Larson East. Okay. All right. And so we are um, starting to address bond. And Mr. Larson East um, collapsed or fell to the ground. Um, and then 
It's uh, and then somebody they helped pull him out of the room, and uh, now the court can hear him talking or yelling through the through the doors again. That's correct, Your Honor. All right, and so Sergeant Fitzpatrick, um, Mr. Larson's is uh, conscious and coherent now back there. Yes, yes. Okay. All right, and so. Um, Mr. Gopal, were you finished addressing Ben? Uh, yes, sir. I believe I was. Um, he is self-employed, uh, mowing lawns. Uh, he has he's single with grown children, and <clears throat> he does, as the court indicated, has a lengthy prior criminal record. Uh, however, Your Honor, uh, in the nature of these circumstances, I would ask for a reasonable bond with a ten percent. Uh, as well as some sort of uh, assistance uh, should you make bond regarding any kind of drug use or uh, that, of that intense investigation. I'm sorry, not an investigation, but uh, treatment if available if you should make bond. All right. And um, Sergeant Fitzpatrick, would you like to address that? Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, uh, due to the nature of the charges, uh, two more felonies, uh, habitual force. Uh, the state's criminal history is extensive, would be an understatement. He also has a, a warrant for his arrest right now, and I believe 20th District narcotic warrant uh, arrest. We have that sort of that either. I mean, due to those circumstances, I think we had $25,000, 10% cash bond would be appropriate. All right, the court will note that Mr. Larson is not present as um, he had to have, he had to be drug out of the room as he had fallen down, passed out or collapsed, I don't know, but now he's um, apparently conscious and coherent and the court, as it stated, can hear him through the through these steel doors yelling back there and the court, um, so the court will note that Mr. Larson is not present for this, for the bond portion. Any objection to that, counsel? No, you are All right. And the court will note that Mr. Larson says, Criminal history is extensive, dating back to 1989 at the very least. And he appeared, he's about 52 years old. And the court will also note that uh, in this court alone, Mr. Larsonese has cases dating back to 2006, ranging from driving while suspended domestic violence, interfering, reckless driving, careless driving, oh, well, that was reduced to careless driving, possession of controlled substance, possession of controlled substance, driving at least suspended, ordering where drugs are kept, used or sold, possession of paraphernalia, ordering, possession of controlled substance, possession of controlled substance, possession of paraphernalia, Possession of paraphernalia, possession of paraphernalia, loitering, assaulting a police officer, possession of paraphernalia, larceny, and now this felony charge. Not to mention the significant criminal history out of a plethora of counties in the state. Taylor, City of Decorus felony, Lincoln Park, misdemeanor, misdemeanor out of Wyandotte. Breaking under your vehicle, Allen Park ordinance violation, Taylor felony, felony reduced to breaking entering a vehicle to steal, disorderly person out of Southgate, Lincoln Park disorderly per oh disorderly oh, discharge of a dangerous weapon. Felony larceny out of Lincoln Park, so out of the Third Circuit Court. Those were all reduced to misdemeanors. Then we have possession out of Lincoln Park, disorderly person out of Southgate, felony fraudulent activities, attempt to financial transaction device out of St. Louis which is up in Gratiot County. Then we have uh, the Michigan State Police Ithaca Post, retail fraud, third degree Isabella County, financial transaction device. This is the resisting and obstructing out of this court, 
Then we have a possession out of this court again. Another possession out of Lincoln Park. The possession, two possessions out of this court. So I want like to spend it out of this court, larceny out of this court. So I'm better dismissed. And we have out of the 23rd district court from January, felony possession. Mind a peace officer, those are both dismissed. Sergeant, what's this? What's the warrant for? It is, is a it for 28th district uh, court warrant for 25th or 28th? 28th, ma'am. Uh, uh, Southgate? Okay. For narcotics. Oh, yes. From April 17th offense, it looks like. Looks as though there's a misdemeanor larceny, felony dangerous drugs, misdemeanor drugs weren't requested as well. And that was uh, out of the 28th district court in Southgate. And then Taylor Police, misdemeanor larceny, misdemeanor fraudulent activities. Oh, there also appears to be a warrant requested for a felony dangerous drugs out of Lincoln Park. So for all those reasons, and the fact that there's a valid and active warrant, and given the nature of the charges in this matter, the court's going, and given the fact that there's a habitual offender fourth offense notice, the court's going to indicate a $25,000 cash bond. Thank you, Ron. No surety, no 10%. The court will indicate about uh, the event, defendant post bond, not to possess with any alcohol or drugs unless prescribed, GPS tether, house arrest, Wayne County Jail. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. And we'll be off the record. Okay, counsel. I can't find my I was thinking about you.